Can you take me through that story of the apartment bombings and how you covered that story? <sighs> yeah, okay. Well, that's the most important. I mean, if, if you want to understand Russia, then you have to understand the apartment bomb, the story of the apartment bombings. And this is when Putin was... Well, P P Putin was at first the head of the FSB, which yeah. is the successor organization to the KGB. But um, during the 1990s, when Russia was transformed from a socialist country with uh, s all property in the hands of the state to a kind of capitalist society in which in, under any circumstances property was in private hands. The, um, the consequences for the Russian people were just horrific. This is when all the oligarchs took out, like... Well, they were created, but, but the... the, the and they were created because the property of the Soviet Union, the resource companies, the, the ports, the facilities, they were all carved up among corrupt insiders who became oligarchs. Became known as oligarchs. Okay. They didn't create anything. They were not true businessmen. They were people who benefited from the corruption in order to steal what it or what already existed. Mm. But the consequences of this this type of privatization were disastrous for the Russian economy, which collapsed. I mean, the 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 national income sh fell by by fifty percent. Well, that didn't happen, even under Nazi occupation, and uh, the the population, for the most part, with the exception of a very small group was thrown into grinding poverty. And it created a, a, a profound psychological crisis, which led to, among other things, a very high death rate. In the years 1990, of, uh, 19, in the 1990s, when Russia was being transformed economically, the... Uh, the death rate in Russia reached the level of, uh, it reached unprecedented levels for an industrial country. In fact, during that period, according to demographers, there were six million excess surplus deaths. Now, surplus deaths or surplus mortality is a term that's used by demographers uh, to describe deaths that could not have been anticipated on the basis of previously existing trends. This is what demographers do. They look at, for example, if they want, they, they, now it's 2022, they want to say, you know, what is the population going to be in 2030, for example, in a given country? Well, they look at all of the relevant trends, you know, the, 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 the way uh, the economy is going, the, the climate, the, uh, you know, investment, uh, the pro, you know the health situation, the improvement in medicine, and so on and so forth, it advances or 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 problems in the area of ch of child mortality, and then they make on the on the basis of a of a reasonable projection, they say, well, the population is going to be X, you know, X, you know certainly. Well, people did that for Russia, of course, mm -hmm. during the 1990s, and especially. Uh, targeted the year 2000, which was a logical target. And the, the difference between what they predicted and what, uh, what in, in, in fact occurred was six million extra deaths. Uh, suicide rate doubled. Accident rate went way up. Uh, people died in, in unprecedented, unprecedented numbers cardiological, from our cardiovascular disease, cancer, uh, the murder rate, uh, you know, became arguably the highest in the world. Uh, all of these things contributed, and uh, there was also just a profound psychological crisis for many people who, ha who, who <coughs> trained uh, to believe in one system were thrown into another system. Uh, for which they were very poorly prepared. In any case, uh, Yeltsin was the president. Mm -hmm. 
his policies contributed to this situation. Not only contributed to it, they were, they were instrumental. And the result was that his popularity in Russia was practically zero. Public opinion polls showed that he had 2% approval in the country. When Putin was promoted to the role of prime minister from head of the FSB, his popularity rating in the only poll that was taken before the bombings was 2%. It was generally considered to be uh, out of the question that Yeltsin or anyone appointed by Yeltsin could possibly succeed Yeltsin as president. And in 2000, he, there were new elections, and the Constitution said he could only serve two terms. Mm. It was at that point that the buildings in Moscow began, and in Russia began to be blown up in the middle of the night, killing you know, hundreds of people. Uh, those bombings were attributed uh, by the Russian authorities to the Chechens, who had, after the, a war in the early 1990s, created a kind of uh, independent state, which was not widely recognized, but you know it had autonomy from Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the basis for launching a new war against Chechnya. And Putin was put in charge of it. Suddenly, Putin, this completely uncharismatic person who no one had ever heard of, in fact, who had never had a career as a public politician, uh, was everywhere vowing bloody revenge against the, uh, the terrorists who had murdered innocent Russian people in their beds. And the, the Second Chechen War achieved early successes. They were well prepared for it. They used banned weapons, uh, cluster bombs, uh, thermobaric weapons, uh, and they bombed markets as, you know, as they have a tendency to do. And uh, they bombed civilian areas just as they're doing now in Ukraine. And uh, the, six, the initial success of the government uh, under Putin in pursuing that war uh, raised Putin's popularity, and he overnight became the leading, com leading contender for the presidency, and in fact was elected president. And his first official act was to pardon Yeltsin and Yeltsin's corrupt family for all crimes committed while they were, mm. while they were in office. So those bombings were very convenient and there was a lot of circumstantial evidence that pointed to not Chechens, but the, the, the Russian intelligence services, the real authors of those, of those explosions. But what clinched the argument was a fifth bomb that didn't go off that was placed in the basement of an apartment building in the city of Ryazan, which is southeast of Moscow. What happened was, uh, you know, the whole country was, was petrified uh, with fear. No one knew what apartment building would be blown up next. And at that moment, uh, this bomb was, was placed in the basement of the building in Ryazan, but people were were on the lookout, and and the the bombers were 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 noticed, and the police were called, and uh, the perpetrators, the people who had put the bomb in the the build, the bomb was defused. Mm -hmm. The people who had put the bomb in the basement were caught, and they turned out to be FSB agents, not Chechen terrorists. They produced FSB identification. Really? Yeah. And the bomb was a live bomb. It was made uh, cons out of the same material, hexagon, which is used to top off artillery shells. It's high explosive that was used in the, the previous bombings. And uh, the, the, the FSB hastily announced that this was uh, not an attempt to blow up a building. This was a training exercise. Mm. Well, you know, believe that. And 
I mean, for one thing, it couldn't have been a training exercise because under the law, if there's a training exercise, all of the officials in the locality where the exercise is being conducted have to be informed. None of them knew it was a training exercise. Mm. Uh, the bombers used a stolen car. Well, they wouldn't have needed a stolen car uh, if it had been a legitimate exercise. And in fact, uh, the the bomb itself tested positive for hexagon, which is a very dangerous explosive. And the detonator, which was filmed and time stamped, uh, was a live military detonator. And you can't carry out an exercise with a live bomb in a, a civilian apartment mm -hmm. building. So that was you know. But and then people who began to investigate, they were all killed. Uh, journalists. Um, uh, deputies in the parliament, the low state Duma, which is the Russian parliament, and uh, Alexander Litvinenko, a former uh, FSB agent who wrote about this, was poisoned with a radioactive isotope in London. You may remember that case. It was put in his tea, and then he just was kind of consumed from within by radiation. Mm. Uh, so there's really no doubt that that's how Putin came to power. What else did they have to gain by creating a new war with Chechnya besides gaining that political approval for him to gain power? Well, that was the that was the main thing. That was, was primary. To, it was to be yeah, and and, uh, and of course you know there was a nationalist motive, of course, because the Chechens had humiliated Russia by defeating them in the first Chechen war. Mm. And, you know, for given Russia's uh, national pride and, and, and so on, I mean, they may, they may way have wanted to, to blot out that disgrace as they understood it. But the point is what it really w did was it put it, it, um, uh, uh, it elevated Putin.